as Nigeria marks 60 years of independence anniversary. Ekiti Central Senator Michael Okwemi Bamidele has said the challenges facing the country are surmountable when right decisions were taken. Senator Okwemi Bamidele said this in a chat with cross section of journalists in Abuja. Senator Mike Bamidele said Nigeria has not done enough in the past 60 years and liken it to poor leadership and call for rejigging of the system in order to give every Nigerian a sense of belonging. Can we take some institutional decisions with respect to how we are structured and how we continue to relate. That is the only way we can sustain this nationhood. That is, that is my point, that we should not pretend about it. Some people will still tell you, even some people who today cannot even leave Abuja for their hometowns safely. Talk about state police, they will tell you they don't want state police. All right? We are playing the ostrich. We should not, Nigeria should not play the ostrich at 60. That is my point. We must address these issues. And it's better that we address it when there is no crisis, when we are not at war, when there is no commotion or tension, when leaders from different parts of the country can sit at the table. So I really don't see the basis for us to continue to pretend is becoming a source of worry, a source of tension. And the best that any leader can do for this country at 60 is to ensure that we revisit the issues that tend to divide us. Also said that Nigerians cannot continue to pretend about a structure for equity and fairness. As far as I am concerned, it is a necessity that we cannot run away from. You cannot expect that some 200 million people will live together without defining the terms on which, you know, I mean, they'll be living together. It cannot work. And it, we must make it to work. And the way to make it to work, you know, is to allow a situation where we can sincerely sit down to look at what is wrong with this present structure that we have, and how best, you know, I mean, it can be revisited. And there had been series of committees, commissions, you know, in the past. Even the constitutional conference was arranged. There were, there have been constituent assemblies, you know. Where are all those reports? Justice Ways led a lot of eminent Nigerians to discuss at taxpayers' expense in this country. They made far-reaching recommendations that bordered on virtually every sector of our national life. Can we pretend that all these things didn't happen? Can we, if we cannot pretend, can we now at 60 begin to say, okay, it's not about who is wrong or who is right. As far as I'm concerned, the big issue, the biggest issue is not even about, you know, which of our geopolitical uh, regions should produce the next president. If we address the issues of fairness and, and, and equity and equality, you know, I mean, all these issues will be taken care of. However, I thank the media for being at vanguard of Nigerian struggle for self-actualization amid threat and poor remuneration for journalists. Senator Smart Adeyemi, representing Kogi West Central District in the Senate, has said Nigeria will emerge stronger in the midst of its present crisis. Senator Smart Adeyemi made this known while felicitating with Nigerians at the country's 60th Diamond Jubilee celebration in Abuja. He said that though the country is going through tough times, he was optimistic that it will emerge stronger. So Nigeria is a blessed country. So whichever way you look at it, I think it, it pays us to celebrate and to equally be um, hopeful for a more united and prosperous nation. To me, it pays us to remain one nation because the, the, the bigger we are, 
the better for us, okay, as a nation. The challenges we are facing are those challenges that no a nation like ours with our diversity will pass through. But it is not a, a, a reason for anybody to feel threatened about the unity of Nigeria. He, however, advocated for economic restructure by strengthening states to take control of their mineral resources. The Constitution uh, Committee is still in place. We're still going to look at how we're going to amend the Constitution to meet the day-to-day -day challenges of our nation. But we are wanting in mind uh, that it pays Nigeria to remain one indivisible nation, our challenges notwithstanding. It pays Nigeria that will restructure, not to restructure for some people to think that some, some zone we, we have problems. There's no zone in Nigeria that doesn't have resources. There's none. There's no nation, no, no, no zone in Nigeria that you can look down on. Okay? I, I told a colleague of mine, I said, uh, when people talk, they, they, they always come with this theory that the North doesn't have anything. And I said, that's not true. Northern Nigeria is even richer than Southern Nigeria. You don't know it? The North is richer than the South. When people talk about riches, they talk about oil, one product. Today, oil is no longer the main thing of economy. Most nations now are going for renewable energy. President Muhammad Wari has transmitted a long-awaited petroleum industrial bill PIB to the National Assembly for passage into law. In a letter read by President of the Senate, Hamad Lawa, at the resumption of plenary, the President said the bill is expected to carry out significant reform in the law governing the petroleum industry, which has been escapulated into two previous laws. The bill proposed the scrapping of Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation and the Petroleum Product Pricing Regulatory Agency. The bill states that the NMPC Limited will be incorporated by Minister Petroleum, who together with its finance counterpart will determine NMPC assets and liability that will be inherited by the new firm. Letter from Mr. President, dear the Sungu Senate President, transmission of the Petroleum Industry Bill 2020 for consideration and passage into law. Pursuant to Section 58 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended, I formally request the consideration and passage into law by the Senate the Petroleum Industry Bill 2020. In particular, the Senate may wish to note that this bill combines in a single term aspects of significant reforms to the laws governing the Nigerian petroleum industry that were previously set out in two distinct draft legislations, namely the Petroleum Industry Bill 2020 and the Petroleum Industry Fiscal Bill 2020. While I trust that the Senate will, in their usual expeditious manner, favorably consider the passage of this bill into law, please accept the single Senate President assurances of my highest consideration. You are sincerely, Muhammad Buhari. In another development, President Muhammad Buhari has asked the National Assembly to approve the reform of the 148 billion naira to Ondo, Bayesa, Cross River, Oshun, and River State for federal road project executed in the above listed states. President made this known in a letter sent to the President of the Senate, Hamad Lawa, and read on the floor of the Senate. From the breakdown, Ondo State, where the governorship election we owed is to receive 7 billion naira as promissory note for project executed on behalf of the federal government. The President requests for resolution of the National Assembly for approval of the reimbursement of 148.14 billion naira through the issuance of promissory notes to Bayalsa, Cross River, Ondo, Oshun and River State governments for federal road projects executed by the states. The Senate may wish to be informed that the Federal Executive Council at its meeting of June 3, 2020 approved the reimbursement of 148.1 billion 
161 Naira, 24 Kobo, through the issuance of promissory notes to the Boelsa, Cross River, Ondo, Oshuna River State Governments for Federal Roads, Road Projects executed by the states. President Mohamed Buhari will next we present 2021 budget estimate before the joint section of the National Assembly. The President of Senate, Hamid Lawak, made his disclosure on Tuesday upon resumption to plenary after two month recess. The President of the Senate, in his opening remark, also disclosed that ministries, departments, and agencies will commence defense of their 2021 budget estimate in October. I'm aware that the executive will be presenting the 2021 budget estimate by next week. Distinguished colleagues, the Senate will provide a month one window for budget defense by MDS. Unlike last year, the month of October will be dedicated for this exercise. Subsequent months of November and December will be dedicated to the internal processing of the budget by the NAS. The various MDS are therefore advised to ensure that they avail themselves the opportunity of the budget defense window to appear with all the relevant and necessary information to defend their budget estimates. Distinguished colleagues, our 1999 constitution as amended needs to be reviewed from time to time to improve the quality of governance and ensure stability in our polity. He also noted that the revised 2020 budget performance will be scrutinized effectively to ensure proper implementation. The president of the Senate said the National Assembly is determined to address the country over reliance on crude oil and close the gap in revenue generation worth 14 billion naira. Nigerian Senate has considered a critical bill that will ensure increased efficiency and guarantee implementation of new national safety requirements in the air transport system in Nigeria. The piece of legislation tied to Federal Airport Authority of Nigerian B 2020 was sponsored by Senate leader Yaya Abdullahi, APC KB North. Leading debate on the bill, the lawmakers said the piece of legislation seeks to provide for effective management of airport in the country. According to him, when passed into law, any person who failed to obtain approval of the Federal Airport Authority before commencing construction of an aerodrome commit an offense and will be liable to fine not exceeding 5 million naira in case of the corporate body, 2 million naira in case of an individual. The bill also confer power on fund to appoint contract layers to cooperate with experts, including specialized agencies resource person, academic and technical institute, advisory committee, etc., in order to assist it in carrying out its function and duties. <laughs> 